Fool's Gold uh, is a label that my friend Nick and I started at the beginning of the year. And uh, I was running another label before that called Audio Research, which was uh, 10 years old when we stopped it this year. So that was much more, Audio Research was much more of an indie hip hop label from like the Fat Beats, Rockers era, which we kept going. Um, but in the last few years, I got into more, and I got more into like merging electronic music um, with the rap, that, the rap stuff that I was producing. And um, basically, there was like a new wave of artists and songs that I wanted to kind of champion and put out either stuff that I was producing or, or people that were like in the same scene as me that I just felt like Nick and I could really bring together and, and package with some good artwork and kind of get behind and, and that, that's how the label started. And um, Are you trying to say you got bored with Backpack? Uh, didn't we all? In a sense. I mean, yeah, and, and it was basically a, a, a crossroads, a situation where it's like, okay, do we try to keep audio research going and give it like a new image? Um, do we just start fresh with a new brand? And it was, I think we all really agreed that a new brand was, you know, made sense. Discuss the AHA routine. The what? The AHA routine. Oh, what, with Kanye? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He doesn't do that anymore, but yeah. Uh, when we were doing the late the Touch the Sky tour, when late registration came out, um, there was a part of the show when Kanye wanted to like play just other people's hits to just get the crowd riled up. The f when we started doing it and we had like the full set for the tour, it was like, they actually had like a clock radio and it was like, hey, let me see what's on the radio. And then you play like a Prince song and the crowd is like, oh my God, I love Prince. Ah. <laughs> Michael Jackson, he's so good. You like him, I like him too. Ah. And then, and then <laughs> he always caught people off guard. The last song was Aha, Take On Me. And, and he would like do the Carlton dance and a lot of people just thought that was just like, so the crowds would cheer and certain people would just look at it like, why is he playing Take On Me? <laughs> I think everybody likes that song, but I think you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Something we haven't mentioned still with the um, fact that you don't have to pay for music anymore. And the fact that also when you do an album and you do like those 13 or 14 tracks, you spend a lot of time put them, put, putting them in the right order, like thinking that anybody going to actually listen to it in that order when everybody's on shuffle on his iPod or people would just like browse into iTunes and pick the three tracks that they know or you know people just download and some of your yeah you, you, you've been like thinking about this interlude between two songs that would be just the right link between song seven and song nine and you know when you get the, the when you go to LimeWire or SoulSeek you don't get the interlude so it fucks up your your whole plan so it's just you know, who 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 knows like like who lis how do you how do you listen to an album, which track whatever whatever like singles stuff like that we're, we're all still experiencing like experimenting I'm sorry all this stuff and you know in that regard I had a lot of fun doing this record. When you come up in hip hop and you learn about production in the, in the hip hop aesthetic, which is which is extremely minimal and stripped down. Um, you look at dance music as kind of a mystery, and I still do. Like even if I, if even if everything I produce this year is like in the 120 to 130 BPM range, and like is meant to be played, you know, next to an electro song in the, in, 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 a, in a club set, I'll still listen to electro and, and dance records and. There'll always be one thing in the track that I hear where I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Like the, so, <laughs> um, I'm not saying that towards Goldie because he, he's I've heard of his temper, but I'm saying um, <laughs> no, he, he screamed at my previous agent like really, he made her cry. Um, she's really sweet. Um, no, I, I, I'll even say like, it's an exception. It's a crazy exception when a dance producer can make a good hip hop style beat. And I think, Name one. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like it's. And, and I think it has to do with like earlier. I was talking about how like dance music has this whole like 
mis like mysterious like studio wizardry side to it. Guys that make dance tracks get really involved with like the fine details of like all these different settings of compressions and you know filtering bass lines in and out and doing all these weird sounds that sound like you know the, the shit that comes out of a cavern and you know like when you when you try to bring that to hip hop a lot of the dance guys don't know how to strip it down enough and it just ends up sounding like extremely overproduced um whereas if you're a hip hop guy um you know like you know about old school electro you know about like the old drum machines and you know about drum programming i feel like hip hop drum programming is harder anyways like to d program drums at a slower tempo is harder cuz it's way harder just like beat max beat matching is harder at a slower tempo it's easy to mix to mix fast records when you when you get when you get slower you hear every detail and every subtlety of your of your pro of your programming is super important. Um, so when you bring it up faster, you're just kind of it, it's it's kind of fun. You're just like, hey, let me make a danceable track and like, just and you're like, I hey, you know I could dance to this and then you, you you know like whereas like when someone you know like the dance dudes will slow it down and they'll still be all like right at with the, like these weird like reason sounds and you're like yo slow slow stop it stop it no give me a loop and a good you know and a good drum program and that's all you need for a good rap beat that I, I always like to think about that because you know like the, the dudes that have the illest drum programming are hip hop dudes like DJ, if you look DJ Premier Premier Dilla who applied to the for, to the first uh, category of artists I was uh, referring to he you know, did the same and the same formula for 15 years, and we still love it. Like, yeah, but, yeah, and, but he made that blueprint, so he can st he can do it for as long as he wants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, there's when you it, when you think about how many people like when how, like how many bedroom producers like will just listen to the drum programming of someone like Premier or JD. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's similar examples for for faster music. Maybe just because in that tempo, there's more room for little mistakes that make the beat good and stuff like that. I'm somehow. I give you that to a certain point, but I'm pretty sure that people like Fio, Kerry Chandler, or so would probably slightly disagree. But um, I, I mean, I'm I'm oversimplifying a bit to make my yeah. point, but. My main or point are you just that basically, dance producers or are you just crap. basically saying you didn't, you want to play faster music because it's more fun to play with at night and you you don't have to stay that sober and you can get away with things a lot easier? Mm, it, no, it's 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 more about the way music is right now. I just I just feel that there's more dance music that I enjoy at this like in 2007. You know, and it's like, and it, I, and isn't that kind of interesting how dance music has become so much more popular, but dancing as such not? Yeah, that's true. And and that, even even when you think that's about because it, it's been a while since you've seen him dance. <laughs> You're gonna be surprised. Uh, <laughs> no, even when you like, I think I even think there's words that used to be really taboo that aren't anymore, like. I catch myself talking about dance music and about pop in this whole lecture in ways that aren't ironic and that aren't pejorative at all. But a few years ago, pop was taboo and dance music was taboo. Dance was something that we laughed at. It was like it was like fucking um, I'm a Barbie girl and those kinds of songs. Like that's what I used to call dance, you know. And if you asked me what category that funk was, I didn't know what you know. I'd be like, well. It's just dope, you know. But like now, you can say dance. Now you can say pop, and and it's not frowned upon. 